And when you tell Muhammad me the Bible's is... corrupt, by the way, when you tell me the Bible's corrupt, you're proving to me Muhammad is a fake. Do you know why? Because you wouldn't tell me the Bible's corrupt if Muhammad agreed with the Bible. But you see, he doesn't agree with the Bible, so you have to attack the Bible to deceive me into following him. Okay, but um, there are things in the in the Old Testament that um, the, that you and the New Testament authors um, like interpret things like like from a Christological point of view. So uh, why not use the Quran as the criteria? Because Allah says in the Quran. Why would I use the Quran as a criteria a, when your Quran in chapter because, five just said, well, listen, did you read it? You didn't read it. It said, we Christians are to judge by the gospel, not the Quran. Did you read 547? You just refuted yourself. Read it again. Yeah, I did read it. Um, okay, yeah, so just, as a Christian who's not a Muslim, what am I supposed to judge by according to your Quran? As According to the Quran, it's... Uh, read it. So let the people of the gospel judge by what God has revealed in it. What's it? And those who do not, it is the gospel. Okay, so why did you just tell me, use the Quran as a criterion, when your Quran is telling me, a Christian, use my gospel as a criterion? Um, Read chapter 5, verses okay. 43 to 45. Okay, can I can I say something about um, this? Um, it, it did say that um, you should judge by... By the gospel, uh, uh, by what God has revealed in the gospel, but um, Allah also says that to not go extremes um, in in what you do. I don't care what Allah the Quran says. says because that's not the gospel. My gospel doesn't care what Allah says. But your Allah told you to tell me to judge by my gospel. Is that what your Allah just told you to tell me? Uh, yeah, it seems. Like so Allah's don't tell me. James, listen, don't tell me what your Allah says to you. I don't give a damn. I'm telling you that you're supposed to tell me because Allah told you to tell me. You Christian, judge by your gospel. So I'm judging you by my gospel. Read 43 to 45. Same chapter. To see that then your Allah tells the Jews, don't go to Muhammad, go to your Torah and judge by it. Uh, but why do they come to you for judgment when they already have the Torah containing God's judgment? Then they turn away after all. They are not true believers. Indeed, we revealed the Torah containing guidance and light by which the prophets who submitted themselves to God made judgment for Jews. So too did the rabbis and scholars judge according to God's book with which they were entrusted and of which... They were make keepers. So do not fear the people, fear me, nor trade my revelations for a fleeting gain. And those who do not judge by what God has revealed are truly the disbelievers. We ordain for them in the Torah a life for a life, an eye for an eye, a nose for a nose, an ear for an ear, a tooth for a tooth, and for for wounds equal retaliation. But whoever weighs it charitably, it, it will be atonement for them. And those who do not judge by what God has revealed are truly the wrongdoers. Okay, can I ask you a question? You read sure. 43 to 45. It even says to the Jews, why are the Jews coming to you, Muhammad? Let them stick with the Torah. So why are you now telling me and the Jews to judge by your Quran when your Quran tells you to tell me, Christian, you judge by your gospel. Jew, don't come to Muhammad, judge by your Torah. So why are you contradicting your Quran? Um, when... When I read these verses, I understood it as the, like the Torah and the gospel as being not corrupted yet at the time of the prophet. Oh, so when now I when I gave you copies of the Torah that were discovered in 1947, that were written before Jesus, showing you that the only Torah that Jesus would have confirmed is what I have today, and even proves it to you, because in 45 it says in the Torah, there's life for life, tooth for a tooth. That verse is still in my Torah. It's in Exodus 21, 22 to 25. So the very verse in 545 quoted, it's there in what I read today. Game over, friend. So now if I judge according to the gospel, I'm going to do what your Quran says. You, Christian, Nasara, judge by your gospel. Okay, James, my gospel says God is the father of believers spiritually. We are his children through faith in Jesus. Jesus said God is the father. I read your Quran. Allah is a father to no one. Muhammad is in, his, is in his son and you're not his son. Then how can the God that Jesus preached about in my gospel be your God? I'm, I, I'm not sure. Say it again. I'm not sure. Okay, good. Another that I'll bring up, sure. it, according to your Gospels, Mark. No, not according to my Gospels. No, no, let me correct you. According okay. to the Gospel that your fake prophet confirmed to be from God. Surah Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verses 46 to 47. Surah Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 66 and 68. Surah Al-Araf, chapter 7, verse 157. Speak disrespectfully and I'm going to embarrass you. According to the Gospel that your fake Antichrist prophet who hoard women confirmed to be from God. So what's your question? Go to Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. O children of Israel, uh, remember my favors upon you. Fulfill your covenant, and I will fulfill mine. And stand in awe of me alone. Believe in my revelations, which I confirm your scriptures. Do not be the first to deny them. Believe revelations and confirm what? That confirm your scriptures. 
So Muhammad is talking to his contemporaries, right? Oh, yes, yes. And so here, Muhammad saying that his God is telling him to say to those people of the book, the Jews, my revelation confirm your scriptures, meaning what you have right now. Keep reading. Uh, Sam, just to this point. Uh, so whenever I say I bring this point up, uh, the, the response that I get is, so this uh, all these kind of things that uh, the passages that talk about confirming the previous scriptures, they tell us that, Oh no, these are confirming some portions about those scriptures. That's not, that's not what it said. Exactly. It says, I know what it said. Your scriptures. There's no yeah. qualification. Doesn't qualify it. Yeah, yeah, I agree that. So you want to read all the way to 44? Because I have yeah, a lot of course. More. Do not be the first to deny them or trade them uh, for a fleeting gain and be mindful of me. Do not mix truth with falsehood or hide the truth knowingly. It's How do you hide the truth if you don't have it? Uh, oh, it says, yeah, 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 of course. Knowingly. How do you hide the truth if you don't have it? Of course, exactly, yeah. So that means they have the truth, but they're hiding it, not corrupting it or changing it, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Go ahead, yeah, keep on going. Establish uh, prayer, pay alm tax, and bow down with those who bow down. And then, do you preach righteousness and fail to practice it yourselves? Although you read the scripture, do you not understand? They read the scripture, huh? So they know the truth, but they hide it. They read the scripture, and the Quran confirms their scriptures. Exactly. No qualification. Now, stay in the surah. Read 89 for me. Although they used to pray for victory by means of the prophet over the polytheists, when there came to them a book from Allah, which they recognized, confirming the scripture they had in their hands, they rejected Wait, it. It confirmed the scripture they had in their hands at that time? Exactly. So the Quran, one of the proofs of the Quran, this is the Quran saying, you want proof that this is from the God of Moses and the prophets? It confirms your scriptures, what you have. It agrees with them. And the Jew says, no, it doesn't. Your book contradicts our book. Yeah, now so, read verse 91. Yeah, when it said to them, believe in what Allah has revealed, they reply, we only believe in what has what was sent down to us. And they deny what came afterwards, though it is the truth confirming their own scriptures. Confirming Wait, so you scriptures. see the proof of the Quran? How are you rejecting the Quran when it confirms your scriptures? Exactly. This makes no sense if the Quran is saying your scriptures corrupt, because that would be an argument that you could use against Muhammad saying, see, you say our scriptures are corrupt, so we reject you. He's saying, why are you rejecting me when I'm saying your scriptures are the uncorrupt words of God, and I confirm them? Now, watch what's going to happen to his argument. He said, the gospel is the gospel given to Jesus, not to John. Sirat Rasulullah, Ibn Ishaq, edited by Ibn Hisham. In the English translation, the life of Muhammad, a translation of Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah. And this comes through Ibn Hisham. Now, guys, please pay attention because I know he's going to pretty much ignore what I'm about to say. Ibn Hisham, when he edited Ibn Ishaq, he removed stuff he didn't like, but he kept this in. Meaning that not only Ibn Ishaq confirmed it, Ibn Asham confirmed it. Look what I'm going to read to you. Because you just told everyone, the gospel of Jesus, not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And yet you quoted Mark and Matthew to show us what the gospel of Jesus is. Interesting. But anyway, among the things which have reached me about what Jesus, the son of Mary, stated in the gospel which you receive from God for the followers of the gospel, Ahl al in applying a term to describe the apostle of God is the following. It is extracted from what John the Apostle set down for them when he wrote the gospel for them from the Testament of Jesus, Son of Mary. In case you didn't hear it, when John wrote the gospel, so just like you had Muhammad scribes writing down the verses for him, here Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham confirm you're wrong because John did write down the gospel that God gave to Jesus. So now, why did you say that these gospels are not the gospel of Jesus when your earlier sources say you're wrong. John wrote the gospel that God gave to Jesus. He wrote it down for Ahl al -Injil. Chapter 48, verse 29, it says, And their description in the Injil, the gospel, is like unto a seed produce that sends forth its sprout, then makes it strong, it then becomes stout, and stands firm on its stem, delighting the sores, that he may cause the disbelievers to boil with rage at the sight of them. Now, I want to understand, this, this verse, 48, 29, is at the time of Muhammad, according to Sayyid. And he's, he's describing something that's in the gospel. This saying is from the gospel of Mark. Mark 4, 26, 29. Even Abdullah Yusuf Ali admits it. Page 1400, note 4917, quoting, uh, commenting on 4829. The similitude in the gospel is about how the good seed is sown and grown gradually, even beyond the expectation of sore. And then he quotes, the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of itself, first the blade, then the ear, after the full corn in the earth, Mark 4, 27, 28. So say, Dr. Sayyid, here Yusuf Ali says, the gospel 
is marked because let me read what the Quran says. Their description in the gospel. So it's saying this is in the gospel, but this is only in Mark. So here your prophet, your Quran says, that's the gospel. That's where you're going to find it in the gospel, calling Mark the gospel. So you're wrong again. 